Okay, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to look at optimizing our JavaScript bundles a little better by separating out code that'll change often from code that's not going to change that much. We're going to start where we left off in the last episode. But if you need to catch up, git check out common chunks. Now that we've added a bit more code to our project, we're going to add a package that allows us to better look into our bundle. As usual, we start in the terminal. npm install webpack Bundle Analyzer. Cool. Now in our Webpack dev, at the top, let's pull that in. After the require, we're going to do a dot bundle analyzer plugin. Now down in the plugins array, do new bundle analyzer plugin. We'll give it an object of options. Generate stats file true. Now when we save, our webpack recompiles, automatically opens a web page on port 8888. This web page is the webpack bundle analyzer. It shows us a visual representation of our JavaScript and all of its dependencies and subdependencies. We can see that in our main bundle, we have node modules that include React DOM and the rest of the React DOM library, Lodash and the rest of its dependencies, the React runtime and a bunch of other stuff that we use in development to make hop module reloading work. You see over here on the right side, here's our actual source code. Inside CRC, we have our app root, our main CSS, content, app.js, just a lot of stuff that we've been working on, even our data. Now this is an incredibly small area of JavaScript, and it's going to change often. But this larger area is not going to change that much, since React and React DOM Lodash and other libraries aren't going to release new versions that often. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to separate our app code from our vendor code. And we're going to do that with a common chunks plugin. Now one more thing I'd like to point out. Because we said generate stats file, in our disk directory, we're going to have a stats.json file. This is going to be output by the Webpack dev server on every compile. And it's going to be used by this website to visualize our bundle. Inside webpack. Inside our webpack.dev, let's add a new configuration option. I'm going to add it under dev server, but you can add it wherever you'd like. We're going to say optimization. Split chunks. And that's going to take an object. The option we're going to start with is chunks all. So this pretty much is the minimum configuration to get the split chunks working. Let's save that. It's going to rerun the Webpack dev server, and it's going to create this new main bundle and a vendor's main bundle. If we look at our web page, we can see that automatically vendor's main bundle and main bundle have both been included by the HTML Webpack plugin. So now if we have two entries that have the same code in them, just for demonstration's sake, let's have one be called main and the other be called other. We let it rerun again, reload the bundle analyzer, and now we have other bundle and main bundle. You can see how it names the vendor bundle. You can see how we're naming the vendor bundle using the name of the other bundles that the vendor bundle. So let's add something else. Let's add cache groups. We're going to give one name here, vendor So now we see a different permutation. We have main bundle and other bundle as zero bytes, and vendor bundle as the entire thing. So now we've taken, we've taken the naming convention out, and instead of replaced it with our own name, we're telling, web, we're telling Webpack that this is the initial chunk, so it should have all the Webpack bootstrap code inside. Now let's carry this over to the prod config. Let's 
take out dev server if you haven't already. So it's only including the vendor's main bundle. So let's add another entry. We'll say other and run it again. All right, cool. So it's using our new naming conventions and it's outputting an index.html that has all the bundles in the right order. You'll notice the CSS has been turned into vendor CSS instead of main CSS. So this, this cache groups vendor name extends to more than just the JavaScript. So the split chunks optimization is meant to replace the common chunks plugin. And so in Webpack 3, you would add a common chunks plugin to your list of plugins down here. In Webpack 4, that'll throw a warning that we no longer want to use common chunks plugin. So in general, it's good to know about optimizations and splitting your chunks so they can be optimally loaded per page. But beyond that, it's a pretty manual process. And there's better ways to go about it when it comes to dynamically serving your JavaScript and CSS. And that's what the next section is really going to be about. We're going to get into server-side rendering first, but then we're going to continue all the way through to dynamically importing both JS and CSS. If you'd like to check out the final code for this episode, get check out Split Chunks Final. All right, in the next episode, we're going to take a look at tree shaking, the often talked about buzzword that really means an automatic process for removing unused code in our bundles. Stick around.